If he came at me with a blade, I could go and cut him. But I've been doing this for a while. I would trade all of that if somebody were aggressively coming at me for one cut. And it looks like this. Comes at me, I place that blade on the arm and all I want is one deep cut to the hand. One deep cut because that means if I cut his hand, he cannot hold the blade. And that's it. If you learn just to place the blade and cut deep to the bone. I know it sounds very graphic, but think about this. If something happens to you because you're afraid to fight for your life, then your life will be over. If that's hard for you to envision that, think about people in your life that you care about. Whether you have children, whether you have a significant other, whether you have a pet dog that can't live without you. If you don't stop this assault, then you're not gonna be around to go home to your kids. So if it's hard for you to fight back for yourself, think about somebody you really love and fight back for them. It's a lioness that protects her cubs. Oftentimes we hear that women cannot defend themselves against men, especially if you weigh 125 pounds and someone that's even 165 pounds, no, no less 200 pounds attacks you. And that is the reason that I believe that women should learn to use edge weapons as an equalizer. What I mean by an equalizer is, yes, you're right. I may not be able to defend myself empty-handed against somebody much bigger than me, but if I have a blade in my hand, if I learn to use it, and I definitely want to say you need to learn to use it and be safe with it, but everyone can carry a pocket knife. Everyone can carry a folder. You can carry it in your purse. You can carry it in your pocket. If you can access it, if you're leaving work and you feel that sixth sense that somebody's following you, you pull that little knife out and you carry it in your hand. It doesn't have to be a big knife. This is a big knife. It does not have to be this big. So for example, learning how to use your blade as an equalizer, as as simple as learning how to cut. If you've ever prepared a meal, you already possess the dexterity, the coordination to use this blade. Oftentimes women think, oh my God, I'm afraid. I don't know how to use a knife. Yes, you do know how to use a knife. If you've even cut a tomato and not cut your fingers off, then you know how to use a blade defensively. So this is an example of, I'm gonna show you what people think you have to do and what you really should do. So if he came at me with a blade, I could go and cut him. But I've been doing this for a while. I would trade all of that if somebody were aggressively coming at me for one cut and it looks like this. Comes at me, I place that blade on the arm and all I want is one deep cut to the hand. One deep cut because that means if I cut his hand, he cannot hold the blade. And that's it. If you learn just to place the blade and cut deep to the bone. I know it sounds very graphic, but think about this. If something happens to you because you're afraid to fight for your life, then your life will be over. If that's hard for you to envision that, think about people in your life that you care about. Whether you have children, whether you have a significant other, whether you have a pet dog that can't live without you. If you don't stop this assault, then you're not gonna be around to go home to your kids. So if it's hard for you to fight back for yourself, think about somebody you really love and fight back for them. It's a lioness that protects her cubs. I would encourage you to find a training place to go to learn how to use a blade because when you think about it, if you're really set on cutting someone, if you're the initiator, you can cut someone. It doesn't take any skill. The reason I also believe in training with an edge weapon is because it's gonna increase my chances of surviving if somebody attacks me. But if I want to employ this instrument as a self-defense tool, how do I learn? Okay, one of the ways that I teach, and this is my, my daughter Selena, is all I tell her is when I come at you a different angle, all I want you to think about is getting your blade to my limb. Am I going for the torso? Not necessarily. I'm practicing on the arm because it's the arm that's holding the blade. So if I come at her, let's say I stab this way, I tell her, cut my hand, 
Okay, now she stuck her left hand in there because she has had training, but in the very beginning, you may not even know to do that. So just one cut, she cuts, cuts to the bone. Okay, I come this way, she cuts, come this way, she cuts. Now what she's doing here is she's following the blade with her hand. Why is she doing that? Because if for some reason she cuts and she misses, okay, I want you to do it wrong, just cut and don't use your left hand and she misses. So it's important that the other free hand, whichever hand it is, that you continue and just you're, you're kind of monitoring that hand. I might come here to practice, she cuts, she cuts, and this is simply the way, and if you also notice, she's facing the blow. She's strong here. She's learned that going towards her center line, she's strong here if I push. Okay, so these are just small things that you could learn, but even if you practice at home with a plastic knife, a butter knife or something, you could start, and it's just an X pattern. We just go high, high, maybe a little bit low, coming lower, and coming lower, and maybe an a thrust, okay? And that's all we do, and that's the way we begin practicing on how to use a blade. So now that we've talked about using an edge weapon to defend yourself, I would be negligent to not say this. A blade is considered lethal force. So even though you might be justified in defending yourself, you do need to know what your rights are. And your rights go like this. I have a right to defend myself in any situation where there's disparity of force, which means that the person is either bigger than me, stronger than me. If I'm an elderly person and it's a young punk attacking me, but even though you're justified and you defend yourself, keep in mind that there's always a civil and the legal aspects of self-defense. What that means is basically in a court of law, there's three criteria that need to be present in order for you to be justified. And God forbid if the person ends up dying, that it's a justifiable homicide. And it's very simple. If you remember ability, opportunity, and jeopardy, it, you have to prove that the person had the ability to harm you, he was bigger and stronger than you, maybe he had a weapon, he had the opportunity, which could mean that he, the distance, he was close enough and you had no other option, you had no option to run, so you had to face the assault. And lastly, jeopardy, that his intention was to harm you and he acted out in such a way that he was gonna act on that intention. That is the only way that it would be, you would be justified in a court of law and that if the person died, for example, that it would be considered a justifiable homicide. So please know your rights. I personally know two individuals that are still in prison today because they did not know their rights and they were justified in defending themselves. And these two women were given bad advice. Unfortunately, they're still in prison never want that to happen to you so know your rights the information is out there and it's important thanks for watching my name is graciela casillas i specialize in impact and edge weapons teaching women's self-defense seminars so if you're interested in further training i also have online courses you can find me at graciela period teachable.com and i also have a book that is for women and it's a women's self-defense book, focuses more on the psychology of self-defense. You can find it on Amazon or you can contact me directly for a signed copy at cmadojo at yahoo.com. Thank you.